don't lose your motherfucking head. That is one lesson that I've learned through reading a few different books. The first one that comes to mind is a book by Iceberg Slim. I think it's just called Pimp. It's autobiographical about his life as a pimp. And he learned towards the end of the book when he went to prison, uh, a rough prison from what I recall, uh, for a good amount of time. And um, there was uh, a very sadistic guard that would beat the shit out of people and uh, not treat people very well. And he didn't treat Iceberg Slim uh, very well at all in particular. And one of the things that he was taught by an older guy, one of the things that Iceberg Slim was taught was to always be in control of your thoughts. The way that it was described, as I recall, was basically the way that um, um, Ben Stiller's uh, character in Tropical Thunder, Simple Jack, head movies. You got a cute, this guy, the Iceberg Slim, this older guy taught him to always be in control of basically your head movies. He's like, think about your mind as like a projection screen and the and the, there's a movie being played on that, onto that projection screen. And you always have to be in control of the movies that are playing. And like, if you control that, you're good. And that was what Iceberg Slim used to get through this prison term. Uh, the, his friend that he was locked up with lost his mind. He got his ass whooped by one of the guards, got caught for doing something, the guard beat him up, and then the dude's like, he lost it, he snapped and uh, lost his mind. And Iceberg Slim talks about being on the verge of that because of how horrific uh, the conditions were for him uh, while he was in prison, but he just focused on, on his mind, on his mental game, every single day and uh, that was what allowed him to make it through uh, his prison term and then I also read this book called Alexander Dolgan's My Story about one of the few Americans who spent a substantial time in the Soviet gulags his dad worked for the embassy in Moscow when he was a kid and uh, so he was from New York but uh, was basically raised in Moscow. Then when he became older, he ended up working for the um, embassy over there in Moscow. And then one day he just got caught up, uh, kidnapped essentially, thrown into prison because that's what they did in the Soviet Union. And I first heard about this dude reading Alexander Solzhenitsyn's The Gulag Archipelago. And Alexander Solzhenitsyn wrote about this dude, Alexander Dolgan, and he said that he was the only or one of the only people to make it out of a certain prison alive and sane because this place was notorious for just making people lose their motherfucking minds because they wouldn't let them sleep. They would interrogate them and torture them all the time and then and just basically 24 seven sleep deprivation. And this dude used basically the same approach to uh, make it through. Just, he was just extremely focused on, I mean, he was very dedicated to not losing his mind, but also just he employed uh, certain tactics to you know, not lose his cool, to keep his head on straight. And just was basically giving himself tasks to do. He, I mean, like this dude had nothing. Like he was in this room, just like some horrible prison cell. The light's always on. You can't, they don't let you sleep. If you lie down, they wake you up and then beat you up. And uh, they don't let you have anything. You can't do anything. It was just, you're just in a room all day. It, they're trying to make you go insane. And uh, he, ended up finding a piece of string 
and then he had his bowl. So he f somehow figured out the length of the bowl, um, the diameter of the circumference, the length of the opening of the bowl. And he uh, measured that with a string. And then he measured the length of the cell. And then I was like, you want to know what? I'm in Moscow. I'm going to walk. He knew the uh, rough distance all the way back to New York. And he's like, I'm going to walk all the way back to New York City in my prison cell. Like, I'm going to cover that distance. And that was one of the ways that he used to occupy his mind. And, and then he was just measured everything else in the cell. Like, measured the cell all sorts of ways and, you know, each brick. Um, and he just broke it down into, you know, all these t uh, small, m mundane, but ultimately tasks. Uh, they were tasks that saved him. And in some of the worst conditions imaginable. And I can have a pretty terrible attitude. And these are some of the... I think about these people who have gone through terrible things. Um, like just being in horrific prison conditions. And being able to get through that. And I, if I'm going through something that's, that's hard... Um, I always like, I use these people and be like, you want to, what? I'm not there yet. You know, I'm not, I'm not in some hell hole of a prison right now. So whatever I'm going through, they can make it through. I can make it through this. If these dudes can make it through some terrible prison where everyone goes insane, I can make it through a 50 mile race. And that's just, I mean, it's an extreme uh, thing to use, but it's also been very, it, it, it's been encouraging. It's been, uh, it's bolstered me just to, to know, to hear these people's stories who have made it through just some of the worst things ever and then apply it to my life, like a little bit of seasoning to get me through uh, difficult times.